Welcome back. I'm Emily Vega and you're watching Maroon Buzz Weekly. As you can see, our boys varsity soccer team are now the Upstate 8 Conference champions. My name is Amanda Plua, but let me introduce you to the soccer team, of course. And so? Um, senior Captain Omar Solana. Senior Captain Eric Ortiz. Senior Miguel Navarro. Uh, senior Captain Julian Orozco. So we, as you can see, we have this beautiful thing. So boys, tell me, what's, what are the emotions like? What, what does it feel like to carry that? Um, honestly, it's a great feeling, um, knowing that I wanted me in with my team. It's been a big, big accomplishment, and it's just a great feeling, honestly. And, you know, we've, we've accomplished not just the challenge tournament, but we've also won the conference. Does this mean you guys are the number one in the state? Am I correct with that? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yes, number one in the state right now. Mm -hmm. um, undefeated. Honestly, being able to bring these two things home, it's just it's great not only for the school, but for the community as well. Do you hear that? Number one in the state and undefeated? Oh my gosh, that brings so much pride to Elgin High School. So what does it feel like introducing for your school? Like They've been putting in a lot of work, you know, usually this group, especially this group right here. These four seniors, they've been together since Julian, Navarro, and Eric have been together since freshman year. Omar came to us as a transfer in his junior year, you know, a major part of our program. We've been putting in work since June. You know, we started our summer camp the second week of June. So it's kind of, for me, no surprise our success we're having right now. But it's just all the hard dedication these guys have been putting in. All right, Coach, what does this mean for the soccer organization at Elgin High School? Um, I just think it's just huge for the boys to get their recognition. Um, like I mentioned, they've been putting in the work since early in the summer, you know, and I just think they've been doing a great job. Okay, since you guys are seniors, what's next? Are you guys going to be professional soccer players or? Um, me personally, I'm looking forward to hopefully playing Division One soccer, but obviously pro is a final goal, but it's all about the journey. Same here as well. Um, obviously, going professional would be the, the dream come true, but um, college soccer is also next thing for me. Also with me, I would love to play professional. That's a goal of mine, but also a goal of mine is to play college soccer. <laughs> so obviously as a kid, everybody wishes to go pro, and um, so I think that's really the main goal for everyone, but um, college soccer is really the next step. Uh, playing Division One would also be a really good goal to me. With all of your success, have you experienced any scouts or scouting? Um, yeah, obviously when, when you're having the success that we are, obviously everybody's gonna hear about it, so. We've had a couple of scouts come out to our games and reach out to each of us, and it's been great. And Coach, what do you have to say about that? Uh, yeah, all, actually all four of these boys, they've been scouted since the middle of the season. Uh, we have they, Each of them actually have two to three uh, colleges looking at them right now. Okay, is there anything else you guys would like to add before we wrap this up? Um, I just want to say thank you to all the fans that have been showing us support throughout the entire season. It's definitely given us an upper hand in most of the games, and we just look forward to you guys keep coming out. Um, playoffs start next week, so it would be huge if you guys can be there. Wednesday, October 19th, 19th at Rockford Auburn High School is our first regional regional game. All right, there you have it from our Upstate 8 Champions Boys Varsity Soccer Team. Go Maroons! Welcome. Today is another day for the buzz. This week, the buzz is talking about culture and sports, so stay tuned for the buzz. We have been delighted to see many of our fall sport perform well throughout the first quarter. Actually, we are surprised that the first quarter is ending so soon. Today we are meeting with the boys cross country and track teams. Here are some of the boys cross country track players. So what are you guys' names? Uh, so I'm Samson Stevens. Uh, my name is Austin Villa. So how have you guys been doing in track since the season has started? Um, for me, I'm not as experienced as most other guys. Um, this guy right here has lots of experience under his belt. But for me, it was, like a, it was a rough start, but right now we're doing pretty good. And it just takes a lot of training to get good at it. Uh, I've been running on the team since my freshman year and running cross in seventh grade. And for me, uh, this year has been very nice. Um, I get to um, lead a pack with the other seniors, and it's very nice. Um, um, seeing a lot of good progress this year as our last year. Why did you guys choose this sport? Uh, for me, I didn't really start running until like eight months ago. And right now I'm getting times that I 
couldn't even imagine that I would be getting. And since I picked up running, like not too long ago, I decided to do cross country. Um, Austin is one of my good friends and most of the seniors I'm cool with. And just, I have a passion for running and just so I get to do it with these guys, it's like, it's something that I have fun with every day. I just, um, in seventh grade, I really enjoyed running and being uh, generally active. And I wasn't really um, cut out for like soccer and stuff. I wasn't the best at it, so I, I still wanted to be active and do something as part of my school um, sports, so I did cross country, and then I've just been running since. It's really nice. Moving forward, what do you guys hope to achieve? Uh, so cross season is coming to an end. Um, now we have to go through winter and stay healthy and keep in shape and be ready for track season. Uh, I'm looking forward for track. I like to run on the track a lot. It's more speed, um, more more focusing on like time and just coming down to March and April, May, I like to run those months. Uh, at the end of the season, I'm looking forward to um, staying in shape for the indoor track season in the spring and beyond high school, I'm, I'm going to try and hopefully run through my first few years of college so that it helps me um, pay it off and I can focus on work and study at the same time, hopefully. What words of wisdom did Gaia leave for you guys? So I wasn't here last year, but he did come to one of our meets. Uh, I think one of our Lake Park meets he was there. And he just helped mentor like all the more inexperienced runners. Uh, he helped like calm down some of our runners because it, it was a race that we expected to be fast. And he helped us, you know, deal with the outcome of the race. Since Yaga was a part of the, the academy here and a part of the team, uh, like a lot of us that are in the team right now, he helped us a lot um, in keeping us uh, calm and like he just told us to do our best and that his um, that his results are all from his hard work and he told us to just do our best and uh, trust ourselves. It was really nice of him. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Thank you for, for having us today. Please support our teams throughout this season. Maroon Strong. As Hispanic Heritage Month ends, we want to present a new segment, Something You Should Know. The terms Hispanic and Latino often are used interchangeably, through they mean two different things. Hispanic refers to people who speak Spanish or are descended from Spanish-speaking populations. In contrast, Latino refers to people who are from or descended from people from Latin America. Let's dive deeper into the subject matter. According to Dr. Nikki Lisa Cole, using Hispanic or Latino as racial categories is inaccurate. Hispanic refers to people who speak Spanish or are descended from Spanish-speaking lineage. Because Hispanic refers to what language people speak or what their ancestors spoke, Hispanic refers to an element of culture. Latino is a term that refers to geography. Latino is used to signify that a person is from or descended from people from Latin America who follow the customs and cultures of that area. So, Hispanic and Latino often are used interchangeably, though Hispanic and Latino mean two different things. And that is something you should know. Here is something else you should know. October has other celebrations. Happy German American Heritage Month, Italian American Heritage Month, and Polish Heritage Month. Also, October 10 was Indigenous People Day. Happy celebrations. Registration for winter sports is now open. Some of the sports available include basketball and bowling. For students interested in participating in a sport this winter season, please register with this link. Anyone interested in joining girls bowling should attend a brief informational meeting this Friday, October 14th at 3 in room 112. Missed a meeting? Please email Coach Legoff at andrewlegoff at u-46.org. Friday night football at Elgin High. The theme, Pink Out and Senior Night, was a hit. We recognize our, our football, cheer, dance, and marching band seniors. Pictures are on the Elgin High School Twitter at the Elgin Maroons. Congrats to the girls' tennis team on their success at the conference tournament. Adi and Mahi took second place in first doubles, and Kathleen and Kayla took fourth place in third doubles. Go Maroons! 
The GSA has expressed LGBTQ community by posting decorations in the library. Take a look. The Red Cross Club will hold a winter clothing drive for the less fortunate in Elgin from now through Friday, October 22. We will be accepting hats, gloves, jackets, and sweatshirts. Please drop everything off at the box in the main office or room 130. See Mr. Castillo with questions. Especially in today's world, it is vital to be in a safe, collaborative school environment. Luckily, we have many outstanding staff members, such as our deans. Joining us this week is Mr. Ballone, the sophomore dean. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me. Tell us about yourself. So I have been in education now for 10 years. Uh, I started off as an English teacher. Uh, this is my first year as a dean and my first year here at Elgin. Um, personally, I've got, a, I've got a family. I've got a wife, two kids, um, and beyond you know, what I do here at school, they're, they're kind of my life. So um, yeah. What are some of your favorite hobbies? Uh, I like to read a lot. I've, I've been struggling to keep up with that just because, you know, life has been so busy recently. I like to hang out with my kids. Um, I Just like reading, I used to love to run, and I don't have as much time for it anymore. Um, but uh, on top of it, I, I like to cook. I like to try cooking new things. Like, I don't like to make a regular just kind of meal. I like to try out new recipes and make new things. So there's a couple of things I like to do. What's your signature dish? That's tough. There's a couple things. Um, I really like to make curry, so that's uh, something I, tr I try to make uh, on a pretty regular basis. Um, I, I like to bust out my Nana's cookbook, so my, my aunt put together all of my Nana's old recipes, and so we like to try out some of those, and it's like in a little book with pictures of her, so we like to try those out too. We see that this is your first year being one of, a, one of the deans. How has it been? It's been great. It's been really challenging, uh, but it's been really, really great. Um, I get to see a whole other world of, of education that I didn't get to see when I was inside the classroom. Um, but it, it's been it's been challenging and great. I, I like to face new challenges, and so um, it's been exciting. Um, I've been learning a lot, and uh, I think I've been learning a lot about our, our students and, and the needs and the wants of our community. So um, yeah, it's been it's been exciting. It's been fun. How long have you been within the education environment? So I've been teaching, uh, I was teaching for eight years before this, and then um, this is my ninth year officially in, in education. I like to round up just to make it easy and say 10 all the time. Um, but no, so this is this is my ninth year, uh, my first year as an administrator. What do you enjoy at the start of the school? Getting to meet, oh sorry, uh, getting to meet all the new kids. Um, that's, that's the most exciting thing. Even as a teacher, that was the most exciting thing about the start of the year, getting to meet all the new kids. But now it's even... Um, a little extra because it's, it's new kids, it's new families, it's new staff, and so that's uh, been the most fun, just getting to know everybody. But in these past few weeks, have you noticed anything positive? Absolutely. Uh, whether it's been at the football games, whether it's been on the hallways, just the, the vibrancy of all the kids, the excitement, um, and also from our, our staff as well, right? Um, there's a lot of investment here that's going on, um, and, and even beyond the community, there's been things that I've been involved with that have, have brought people from outside of the building in. So I, I think that um, there's a lot of people who are trying to do some really exciting things here, and uh, that we all just kind of need to lean into it a little bit. For this school year, is there anything else that you would like to see or achieve? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, one of the goals that I have is always to see that students are inside the classroom. And so attendance, I think, is a big thing that um, that we can work on. I think that there's some room there that we have to grow. And I think that that's a job that um, takes everybody. And I think we can all kind of pitch in together to make sure that um, our attendance gets better. Because the best thing that we can do as a school to help um, our students academically to help them behaviorally, emotionally, socially, all of those things is, is inside the classroom, right? So we need to all kind of work together to improve those attendance numbers. I think that's, uh, that's where I'd like to focus a little bit. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we end this interview? Um, yeah, the only thing I would say is if you see me in the hallway, I'm generally a pretty happy, go lucky guy. If I'm not, try and turn that around for me. Uh, say hi, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, I like to talk with kids, I like to hang out. Um, so, so if you see me in the hallway, take that opportunity, um, get to know me. Wonderful answers, Mr. Ballone. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.
We highly appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. We hope for a successful school year. If you ever need anything, do not hesitate to ask Mr. Ballone in the Office of Culture and Climate. Go Maroons, go 2023. Maroon Bus Weekly is Elgin High School's news team. If you like what we're doing, please like and subscribe. That's all for this week. Come back next week for Elgin High School's Maroon Buzz Weekly. 